Hello everyone, I hope you guys are doing well. Thanks for tuning into your reading. So today I'm gonna do a different kind of reading and that is who has a crush on you? So who has a crush on you? Who's into you? Let's look into it, let's see what comes out, okay? So I was guided to use my dark crystal deck for some reason, don't know, probably I just like them and I haven't used them in a while, but maybe there's a deeper reason, who knows? Let's see, and so you can use that to choose. But I also wanted to use my Island Time Wellness as well. So go ahead and clear your mind, take a nice cleansing breath in through the nose and out through the mouth. And then this will help you to choose your group. I'd like to thank those of you who came over and got extended readings from me this week. It was very helpful. I appreciate that and your donations to the channel. You guys keep the channel going and I am very, very grateful. Anybody needing a private reading, they can look below the video into the description box and you'll find my information down there, okay? This is a general reading as always and my regulars know that. So just take what resonates and forget what doesn't. So this is group one, group two, and group three. I'll turn the cards over in a moment. I'm gonna supplement it with the Island Time Wellness. So this is group one. And this is group two. Oop. There's group three. Got a peek at group three already. Okay, so you can pause the video if you need more time, if you want to pick before I turn the cards over, or you can look at the cards and decide from there if you wanted to choose a different group. So we've got the seven of hearts. Very cute. Um, so that's like seven of cups. And then we've got the real deal. Oh, wow. They see your light, a total keeper, genuine, compatible, authentic, healthy, a good choice. Okay, so it looks like, yeah, these both are talking about choice. Seven of Cups is about making a decision, having options to choose from. And it's also about a surprise, which was my first thought, that some of you might be surprised to learn who has a crush on you or who's into you. Or maybe even that they feel the same way that you do. There could be something surprising about this person. So um, that's the deal here. They see your light. They're a total keeper. They fantasize about you. They daydream about you. So that's group one. Group two, we've got the six, six of spades. And we've got the must list. Be unapologetically self-loving. Decide on must-haves. Then release it to the universe. Okay, I feel like some of you are moving on from something that's not serving you or you need to move on from something that's not serving you or this person is that's coming in who has a crush on you. Um, because this is what this is about, right? Six of Swords is about leaving behind what doesn't serve you, leaving behind behind tough times for greener pastures, and it's it's a journey. It's not the easiest. When people take journeys or travel or go on trips, then they often do make a list of all the things that they need to take with them, and it's a time of culling. It's a time of sorting through your things and getting rid of, you know, um, any clutter because you have to be very you know sort of minimalistic and careful and thoughtful about what you bring with you on your trip because you know it's expensive it's expensive to take a lot of things uh, to have things shipped to your new location stuff like that and that's what's coming through here so this person is unapologetically self-loving um, so that this is good this means that probably they have been through some conflict um, a bad unhealthy uh, situation or mistreatment and they've decided to, to love themselves and now they're deciding what they want in a person what they want in their life what they must have versus what you know is what they don't need anymore and they're releasing it to the universal so this is group two okay so let's see who has a crush on group three we've got the six of hearts okay <laughs> It's a very sweet energy, although the picture is not sweet, uh, as you can see. But the energy, Six of Hearts, is very sweet. And we've got the, unfortunately, <laughs> narcissism. So I guess that narcissism is an ugly word and it matches the ugly creature on the card. So this could be somebody from your past or somebody that you dealt with or had a crush on in the past, know from your past or could remind you of someone like that. Um, this card says manipulation, control, infidelity, disregard, boundaries, egocentric, entitlement, self, selfish, rule breaker. Okay, so um, yeah, this is the person that's into you, has a crush on you, okay? Somebody that, um, and the six of hearts is a card of having a crush. 
and it's a card of comfort as well somebody feeling like familiar so there's a sense of being drawn to each other due to it feeling familiar but unfortunately when bad things or negative traits are familiar to us since we you know um, have experienced that in the past then that's what feels familiar to people and unfortunately not everything that's familiar to you is something that you should um, persist in but it looks like um, this person is feeling like you are familiar to them comfortable to them narcissists you know people with those traits tend to gravitate towards you know um, people they've or types of people that they've dealt with in the past because they know how to um, handle those people deal with those people or manipulate them in the cards talking about manipulation okay so maybe some of you know who this person is um, I don't know I, and um, but this is someone that's crushing on you okay so this is group three all right, again, pause the video if you need more time. Timestamps are linked below. And we're gonna get started with group one. All right, group one, I'm excited about your reading because um, you're dealing with someone that's the real deal. Somebody that's probably gonna surprise you. Um, even if you know who this person is, they may have a surprise for you. This is someone that daydreams about you. Somebody that probably has you on a pedestal, sees you through rose-colored glasses. This is uh, a choice amongst many choices, or you are the, their pick. You're like their pick, their top pick here. Um, and, you know, this is somebody likely to be authentic, compatible, and just a good choice. Healthy, sounding like the whole package so far. So let's move this out of the way, put it up here in the corner. I do want to use my Divine Masculine deck, but if you're here for a female or a feminine, go ahead and just apply the traits that way. I do channel as a feminine, so use the pronouns that fit you. So we've got the real deal here. Seven of Hearts. Somebody that for a crush already has developed quite a lot of feelings for you. We've got the hipster, so that could be this person. Um, something about this card can be a clue as to who this person is that has a crush on you. Um, card says just chilling, gaming, music. I'm really getting strong like music vibes, so there could be a musical connection of some kind. They could work in that realm, don't have to. Say la vie, so going with the flow, French um, energy, maybe they have that in their um, lineage or something. Living in the now, also getting Louisiana vibes here. Um, and hanging with friends so this is a chill person okay this might even be a friend somebody that you know you guys just chill together you listen to music you play games um, you just hang together or know each other through friends groups something like that they could be on the peripheral of your life somebody that knows of you if not knowing you directly but I feel like some of you do know who this person is and would be surprised that this person has a crush on you okay so I haven't used my Kleenex box full of traits in a while so I'm gonna go ahead and do that for you guys. So again, just kind of clear your minds. For group one, what are some traits, excuse the dust, that this person has that has a crush on group one? Okay. Servers are naturally accommodating, caring, nurturing, hospitable, and charitable. So they could work in hospitality. Some of them are like, musicians by night and then they are servers or work in hospitality or some other nurturing um, or customer service role during the day or in their off hours um, also getting healthcare vibes but yeah this is a naturally accommodating caring nurturing hospitable person charitable person nice they're the real deal after all and but here here's the other shoe um, poor communication except through creative expression unrealistic okay so that kind of goes along with the vibe that we're picking up here. It's a creative type person, and so maybe they communicate through music. This is the type that back in the day when we made mixtapes mix or something like that would give you a mixtape, you know, so you can listen to the music so you could hear and understand how they feel about you and what they want to communicate. Uh, because like it says, they're not great at communicating verbally, okay? Through, except they, except through creative expression, and they can be unrealistic, but hey, what's real anyway, right? real is whatever you decide it is the trick is sticking with the story right and following through on it so with that being here I wanted to get you guys a, a song card here for my one of my song decks since this person communicates in a creative way 
it'll be kind of fun. And I just saw the um, Knight of Wands, which I feel like is a very, we're going to go ahead and take that one. That is a very um, crushable card. In other words, it's perfect for the reading because it is about somebody having a crush on you. Um, he has a crush on the woman. He um, just watched the video, Google it, look it up. Um, and the name of the song is, let's see, it's Bruce Springsteen, classic. And, uh, and like I said, Knight of Wands. So this person could have strong fire in their chart or those traits anyway. And um, this is I'm on fire, Bruce Springsteen. So being on fire for someone, this person's on fire for you. They are definitely passionately attracted to you. There could be some major differences between the two of you, like class differences or your opposites in some way. Maybe you're very rational, practical, and together, a list maker or something like that. Like this person is a little bit more on the wild side, but also very, um, very friendly, very dynamic, very attractive. Okay, so um, perfect card for a crush reading. This person, um, you're they're on fire. Okay. So they, they long for you. They daydream about you. That's what he does in the video. He daydreams about this woman. Um, and then he goes and finds her, but then he wimps out, <laughs> you know, he, he doesn't follow through. Um, but so maybe that's part of the story here. Somebody's not following through. So now I'm going to use my character traits deck and that's for sale link down below for anybody interested in that. And I'm just going to go ahead and grab right from the middle. So who has a crush on group one? Ooh, famous. Okay. So this is somebody that I feel like is aspiring to be famous through some creative expression, whether that's locally famous or famous on like a grand scale. And they could already be famous. This person, like we got strong music vibes. So this person could, um, you know, for some of you, I, mean, I imagine very few of you, but someone out there, this person who has a crush on you is famous. Okay, I'm being drawn to another part of this deck. Who is this person that has a crush on group one? We've got aloof detached. Yeah, some of you could be surprised to know that this person is into you because um, they're not great communicators. They only really create or uh, communicate through creative expression. Um, and so they could appear like they're aloof and detached. And again, maybe that's why this person, um, to know who this person is might surprise you. Um, so they're kind of like that cool vibe, you know, that goes along with, you know, musicians and movie stars and stuff where they're kind of aloof and detached. They're the kind of people that, you know, they um, have to have their guards up because people are attracted to them. I already said this person's attractive, so they have to keep, you know, their boundaries up you know, for their own safety and for, you know, just because people want to be close to them. So they have to be a little aloof and detached. So that can send mixed signals to somebody that they like because that person, you know, doesn't know that they're, that they like them because they're, they're too busy, you know, trying to keep their distance because they have appearances to keep up. And just because it makes practical sense for them to stay a little bit distant from, um, people, people in general. And we've got bossy and arrogant and some of them apparently are um, bossy and arrogant so also getting some Virgo vibes somebody could um, have that and then this one's at the bottom of the deck unusual hair so this person could have unusual hair that might be a sign um, for you I'm drawn to the red here so this person could be a ginger they could have red hair or red tint to their hair or really light white hair as well. They could have dyed hair as well, so their hair is naturally dark or partially dark, partially light. So um, that's those are other things, okay? So I'm being drawn to this deck here. It's got more like creative types on it. I was gonna do the um, archetype deck as well, so I'll probably do that as well. Who is this person that has a crush on my viewer? Who is this person that has a crush on my viewer? We've got Miriam Makeba, Makeba. And then we've got some more Virgo energy coming um, out with Freddie Mercury at the bottom of the deck. So I feel like we have a couple of different types of people. 
Um, one type is like famous you know amongst their friends group in other words known in their community and another was like actually more famous on social media or even like in the creative fields likely music okay and so miriam mccurba what are we making of her if the times are broken it is our job to mend them your job makes fools of your oppressors in an age of liars the truth is dynamic so this almost feels like somebody that does poetry slams writes music songwriter a writer uh, um, into rap something like that okay it's somebody that kind of has a different point of view about things and um, you know artists often do and that's kind of what she sounds like um, to me but also like a hard worker so even if this person seems like I get that this person is a hard worker because it feels like they have more than one job they have their side gig which is what you know they're pursuing as a dream and then they have the job that pays the bills and then we have a dramatic life is better than being dramatic about life. So again, being aloof, being cool. Um, extravagance is the wicked stepmother of, of inventions. So that goes along with that kind of Virgo energy of even though you might have a lot or like nice things, you're still trying to keep yourself in check. They still try to uh, maintain some level of humility or at least just awareness that in order to be creative, they have to keep their extravagance in check. So they're not like these wild, you know, musicians that trash the whole hotel room or get all crazy I don't feel that vibe from this person they kind of keep it in check because they know that that's important for them to continue to flow creatively um, there's nothing more precious than frivolity but yet they do have this um, energy of like when the time is right and under the right circumstances you know they are carefree fun frivolous don't take life too seriously and that's where that unrealistic vibe kind of came from earlier so let's get um an archetype card and if this reading is resonating please hit the like button and subscribe it does support the channel and it helps to keep it coming back keep me coming back to do more readings and it puts your energy into the reading as well so it's a way for you to interact with your reading as well if you'd like a reading like this just reckon like suggest it rather or let me know that this is the reading that you would like like a who's into you or who has a crush on you kind of reading we can do that for you that being said, group one, let's get another card on this person who has a crush on you. They seem like an interesting person, I have to admit. Who is this person that has a crush on group one? We've got Midas Miser, okay? So entrepreneurial, creative ability to turn anything into gold, delight in sharing life's riches. So that makes sense. We have um, someone that is generous, charitable, because we saw that already. And uh, this is somebody with, the, you know, with Midas touch, whatever they touch turns into gold. So they're, I mean, that makes sense if they're famous, that denotes a certain level of wealth and um, success. Others of them are on their way to that, and that's really important to them. And so if they're on their way and it's important to them and they're working towards it, then more than likely they are going to attain some level of that um, success and wealth. And the shadow attributes is hoarding money, hoarding emotions, obsessive fear of losing their wealth. So um, yeah, that's the balancing act that we kind of saw with the Freddie Mercury card of wanting to kind of maintain control and sens sensibility, but also like allow yourself to enjoy what you've earned and have a good time. Um, and we can kind of see that too with the aloof and detached energy that this person um, can like keep their emotions to themselves, have a hard time, like before it said, have, the, have a hard time expressing themselves, except through creative expression. I think that's in part due to them kind of keeping their um, emotions inside, which is why some of you are probably surprised. Um, who this person is or when you find out who they are you will be surprised because they probably have not showed it or told or told you and if they have you know it's been a while since they did that it's just there's some detachment here so let's get another card for you guys this person that has a crush on group one oh, 
we've got Divine Masculine and Soulmates flying out of the deck. Then we've got Love, Creativity, Intimacy, and then one that fell on the floor. Okay. All right. Let me just get them all in order. They're kind of a mess. And we've got dating forcing its way out. So we've got Divine Masculine. That goes along with the real deal card talking about, you know, this person's the real deal. I mean, we saw that. It's really positive energy. You know, someone that sees your light. That's something a Divine Masculine would do. This is a total keeper energy, genuine, compatible with you, authentic, healthy, a good choice. Then after that, we've got soulmates. So this is a soulmate. This is someone that you are meant to meet that you have a natural vibrational alignment with and a natural attraction to. We've got love. So this is somebody that you, that if you know, you probably love them as a friend. If you don't know them, which a lot of you do not know this person, just know that this person was a crush on you, loves you. And more than likely, you know, you're going to love them too. We've got creativity. So you might be in a creative field as well, or this person will inspire your creativity. You could be this person's muse or in some way help support them um, in their creative expression. And we already saw, you know, their creative expression is what connects them to source and helps them to be their div the divine masculine or the divine feminine that they are, depending on who's watching and what, who you're here for. We've got dating. So this person is going to woo you, be chivalrous. It's going to be very romantic. It feels like in a traditional sense. I feel like, again, this person's going to surprise you. You're going to be chilling at home and this person is just going to pop over with some flowers. They're that kind of a person, even well into the dating, like well into the relationship. They're still going to surprise you with things that they know um, will make you happy, will make you smile. And there will be a lot of intimacy in this connection. Like if you want this person in your life, it'll be very intimate. You'll be very close. Um, you'll be able to be vulnerable with one another. And so that will feel very nurturing. It will feel very um, fulfilling. And it will just feel very nice and comfortable and um, sweet and tender. And um, there will be a strong sense of connection between the two of you. So this is what this person is at least daydreaming, daydreaming about, wanting with you, this is what they bring to the table, okay? So let me get another deck. Again, any of the pictures on here can be clues in terms of what this person may look like, hair color, eye color, things like that, clothing. Tell us more about group one's person that has a crush on them group one's person who has a crush on them. We've got Marianne Dashwood. Okay. And it's Queen of Diamonds energy. So that does go along with, um, you know, the energy of wealth, abundance, material abundance, material success. This person um, more than likely has or is really on their way to achieving. This energy is the energy of somebody very resourceful, very fertile in mind and body more than likely as well. Um, has a lot to offer uh, domestically inclined as well. So it's not like they're just, you know, working all the time or um, only focused on, you know, their, their outside interests. This is someone that, you know, appreciates having a comfortable and nice home as well. And Marianne Dashwood, she's from Sense and Sensibility. And I believe I did say the word sensibility earlier. So that aligns. Um, the movie and story, Jane Austen's story, um, Sense and Sensibility. Check it out if you haven't already. Just to kind of get a glimpse um, of who this person is or some aspect of this person. I believe her, um, the role um, was played by Kate Winslet, at least in the one that I watched. And um, she is, if I'm not mistaken, not, you know, not an expert on Jane Austen, but I was drawn to the stick. And she's very whimsical, she's very fanciful, she's very, very romantic, and naive as well. So there's that unrealistic vibe again. But um, she's undeniably charming, right? And so um, she learns some tough lessons the hard way, but ultimately ends up, you know, happily ever after. So that's what's going to happen with this person. So hopefully, maybe it will be, be with some of you if you guys feel the same way. And... Um, Get you another card. And then I'll just get 
one more deck after this and then some messages from this person and that will be your reading you guys can stick around for groups two and three if you feel guided to or check out another reading down, down in the description box where I have a playlist or two linked with different readings tell us more about group one's person who has a crush on them all right <clears throat> Zora Neale Hurston, their eyes were watching God. She couldn't make him look just like any other man to her. He seemed to be crushing, oh, crush, okay, he seemed to be crushing scent out of the world with his footsteps. Crushing aromatic herbs with every step he took. Spices hung about him. He was a glance from God. So very sensual energy here. This person, especially you know even for my masculines I'm um, watching but for everyone is going to feel like you know this is this is you you know you um, you alive in their senses um, there's something about you like the way that you smell you smell very good to this person the way that you cook they love the way that your food smells for those who cook and it's just mostly a, a very poetic way of saying that you make like life more vivid and um, more pleasant and there's just something about you that you know like it says he was a glance from God and this person is seeing the light in you so you're gonna see the light in this person as well okay so there's that and even the way that this is written it's a little bit more complicated in its prose and the way that it's written so that to me you know it took takes a moment to interpret it so I feel like it's an example of how this person speaks just kind of in a way that makes you stop and think for a second and then when you realize the message that's being said it's kind of profound it's um, memorable it's um, interesting it's kind of impressive um, and but certainly kind of um, otherworldly romantic um, creative artistic okay And I don't want to make you feel like this person is just straight out of art class or something like that. I feel like this person does have a rugged nature as well. They, um, they have a bit of grit to them. They are gregarious. They are in their body. They are physical, sensual. Uh, I feel like many of them are quite active. I'm getting somebody rides a motorcycle as well. They could be into horses like you see on the card, but I just feel like in their own way, they are um, kind of poetic. And this card just fell out. It says, where is your pain? In my emotions. Okay. So yeah, this person has been through pain, heart, had their heart broken. I feel like they have been sobered up by life. I think this is somebody that was particularly fanciful in their youth and romantic. And as a result of that, you know, what happens to, to soft people in a hard world, they usually get, you know, broken down and take it worse and take, take it harder than, um, you know, uh, less sensitive people and I feel that's what's happened to this person but I think it's helped them to become more strong more powerful and more helpful to other people generous charitable and probably work some of them work in a healthcare profession or a helping profession um, but a lot of their creative energy flows from their pain their emotional pain and what they've suffered not that they yeah and at the bottom of the deck we have um, I enjoy tender narratives being seeking being so you might find like a lot of their interests, especially creatively, um, stem from what they've been through. It's um, kind of cracked their heart open. This is somebody that when you're intimate with them, with the intimacy card, um, you're going to see them cry or tear up, even if they're the most masculine of masculines, which if they are, the divine masculine came out. Divine masculine is not afraid to cry. He's in touch with his, emo with his emotions. And so he will tear up. You will see that. And the thought of like wanting to be with someone, wanting to be with someone special, having a crush on you, wanting to be with you, this makes this person feel very tender as well. So they could even um, watch romantic movies and think about you um, or think about their future partner and the type of relationship that they would really desire. And it's coming from a very sweet and tender and authentic place. 
Okay. Um, then at the bottom of the deck, we have slice in front of me. I insist. Okay. <laughs> but I'm also drawn to the cookies. They, they could like cookies. I think they're going to like um, to bake or cook. I really feel like that. Or they could be a foodie of some kind. Um, but this is just an example, again, of this person would let somebody go ahead of them. Like cut, cut them in line. Be generous towards other people. And that kind of thing. So what would this person who has a crush on group one say if they had no filter? That was fast. I won the jackpot with you. Even when you are grouchy, I still love you. So this person, you know, if you guys are involved in any way, this person loves you. If you give this person a chance, they're going to love you even more. Um, even when you're grouchy, they're still going to love you. Um, that's saying something, right? Um, so, and they're going to feel like, you know, they have won the jackpot with you. That's how important that you are to this person. Let's see what else would this person say? You have such a good heart. You are way too good for me. So as good as this person is, they are still going to um, um, feel like you're better than them. Um, Put you ahead of them that's a seven of hearts energy idealizing you um looking at you through dreamy eyes rose colored glasses i mean who doesn't want to be perceived in their highest light this person is going to see your light so it's not going to be like they're just seeing like through rose colored glasses they are going to see your true light and i feel like they're going to bring out your true light for some of you this person is your twin flame your soulmate higher level soulmate and um and they're not going to hesitate to tell you you know just how great you are and how good you are and um how much they value you okay then I have at the bottom of the deck you are beautiful inside and out I love to stare at you I love your smile so I feel like that's a hint this person could tell you that, that they love your smile or you could catch this person staring at you so keep your eyes open <laughs> are, are there people you know on the outside that maybe you don't pay attention to that you catch staring at you a lot or um, something like that, but this person is going to be into your heart, you know, into who you are on the inside as well as on the outside. So it's it's not just going to be physical or shallow. Their interest in you is going to go, you know, much deeper than that. So, um, yeah, and I just opened up on ever since I met you, my life's transformed for the better. Thank you. So this is a very transformative energy that we're seeing here. Um, that you're really going to impact each other and this person especially is going, going to be transformed by this connection perhaps has already been transformed by this connection transformed by their crush and, and interest on in you let's get some cards from um, the numinous deck to see if we can get some some more astrological associations with this person i got virgo leo cancer libra so far earth signs fire signs some water everybody but let's see if we can get a more specific idea and then this really be will be the last deck i pull from okay for group one who is this person that has a crush on them we have the moon, Cancerian and Piscean energy, okay? Nurturing, comforting, talks about digestion and family. So fourth house energy, um, they're going to like, you know, domesticity in a woman, femininity. They are in touch with their feminine side. They could be close to um, female relatives or have had like a stronger impact than, than normal um, by, you um, female relatives uh this could be yeah i'm getting that privacy is important to this person emotions again sustenance that foodie energy self-soothing moods mother so all of those things are clues let's get one more from this deck but they are in touch with their feelings i think their feelings can be mis a mystery to them sometimes um you might find them like a bit mysterious as a result of that as well And this person has been through things that have turned sand into a pearl. So this person really is a gem. They really are a pearl. There is more to them than meets the eye. And then we've got Gemini, the butterfly. 
So curious, communicative, versatile, flexible, variety seeking, social, brilliant, perceptive, adaptive, street smart. I think, didn't we get hipster earlier? Yeah, some street, street smart there. And I feel like that reflects like their um, clothing as well. And there's probably something a bit eccentric about the way they dress, at least when they're performing or doing whatever creative hobby that they're interested in. Um, studious, they could be restless, fidgety, but I feel like this person is um, just very in touch with like their intuitive nature, their gut instinct, but they are a balance here. I feel like we're talking about this is the them in their private life, moon energy, and this is them in their public life, the social butterfly. So this is what I've got for you guys. Thanks for tuning in. Please hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. It does support the channel and keep me coming back to do more readings. Um, do check out my last reading if you haven't already or the playlist linked down below for a different reading. If you'd like a private reading, my contact information is in the description box. Thanks for tuning in. Hello, group two. Thanks for tuning into your reading. All right, so you guys chose the six of spades and the must list. So your person who has a crush on you is unapologetically self-loving. Uh, it feels like that's something that they kind of learned the hard way. They could be coming out of a conflicted relationship um, and are moving away from that. They are moving towards greener pastures. They're moving away from what doesn't serve them. And they have really like set their mind on what they want, what they must have in a partner and in their life. And they're releasing you know, releasing it to the universe, right? Because that's how you do it. Because they could be in manif into manifestation, like the law of assumption, law of attraction, because that's the vibe I'm getting. When you release to the universe, it doesn't mean that you let go of your desires. It means that you let go of the story that contradicts your desires. And I feel like this person mentally is figuring that out and how to only think affirmative thoughts about the story they want to experience. So that's pretty deep. That's pretty good. Air sign energy strongly there, but we'll see what else comes out for you guys. So let's get um, started here as soon as, <laughs> as soon as I can. Where are my cards? Here they are. Okay. So go ahead and clear your minds, group two. Help me out. Clear your minds. Definitely getting this person's on the move. They could even be a runner as well. Tell us about the person who has a crush on group two. I say can't make this stuff up um, this one's also trying to come out this person is moving from a time when they were unawakened or they were dealing with an unawakened person and unawakened people attract unawakened people sometimes um, and they were focusing on the wrong things they couldn't see the forest for the trees it feels like they allowed themselves to be taken advantage of and at other times took advantage of others and they're running away from that it feels like they are exiting um, another relationship um, maybe not necessarily very soon but that's definitely still in their energy and they're running away from that okay they're running back to safety it's like they had a fear of commitment they took the easy way out maybe they settled for something they thought they wanted but their ego wanted it but now they realize that's not what they want they're running towards having a family they could be even running back to like their hometown back to a family literally um but i feel like this person has woken up and they are not letting their ego um like dictate their life anymore they learned the hard way and what they want is a family to be provider to be a father or a mother if you're here for a feminine they want to be admired put family first um have a loving soul you know be there for their family um even put their family's needs and others needs ahead of their own but i don't feel like they have always been that way so that's interesting let's get some more traits from my uh, kleenex box I've took it out of retirement just for you guys. <laughs> so tell us more about group two's person that has a crush on group two. And this one fell out as well, got a fuzzy. So why did this one wanna come out? Sages are naturally engaging, articulate, charming, entertaining, and expressive, okay? So this person could have Sagittarius in their chart, don't have to, but is talking about a sage 
who, so this is this person that has a crush on you. They're engaging, they're articulate, so they know how to use their words, they know how to speak well. Um, they're charming, they're entertaining, they're expressive. So this is good, somebody that knows how to express their feelings and knows how to just express themselves. We've got artisans. Artisans are naturally creative, inventive, imaginative, playful, and decorative. So this could indicate what this person does for a living or what their personal interests are. They're creative, inventive, imaginative, playful, decorative. Even like for a man who stereotypically resides in like a bachelor pad, this person probably has pretty good taste, um, decent taste at least in terms of like how they decorate. Um, things like that or they just at least will stay out of your way we've got strong teaching skills so this person could be a teacher a professor or they're just a natural teacher and they just know again and that goes along with being articulate because articulate people can convey a message right and that's important when you're teaching um, others skills when you're teaching others you need to know how to express yourself right and express express the lesson and this person comes across as being able to do that so I'm going to use my traits cards and anybody interested in these, the link is down below. So let's see more about this person. Oop. Hard worker. Okay. I guess if this person is a teacher or professor of some kind, I mean, then they would definitely be a hard worker. Everybody knows that teachers really bust their butts and work hard. Tell us more about the person who has a crush on group two. falling out there medium length hair so um, now they have medium length hair regardless of their gender or sex we've got selfish okay I feel like this person's definitely been selfish oh, and I feel like this person is moving towards greener pastures they're changing their thinking to be more affirmative but there's probably like, like the card says some remnant of their selfishness still that they still um, embody they're selfish sometimes but also this person um, who else? <laughs> Tell us more. Tell us more about the person who has a crush in group two. Okay, not from this, I guess. We'll get one more section. That one just fell out, so we'll honor that. I'm getting like a Roman nose. A Roman nose. And then I don't have that uh, card, so I'm not looking at the card, but like, you know, more of kind of like a classic Roman nose. You can Google it to see a picture of it. Um, I know a, a lot of Italians. It could be Italian or Italian or their, um, you know, people come from there, something along those lines here, like a Roman nose. So it's like a prominent nose and um, not unattractive, but definitely on the bigger side. We've got soulmate. So this is a soulmate for you. And they definitely will not settle for anything less than a soulmate now. Having gone through whatever it is that they are leaving behind, they are not going to allow themselves to be in a superficial or just unsatisfying kind of relationship going forward. They're looking for the one that, you know, touches their soul. We've got spacey and dreamy. So this person, you know, they can be spacey um, and dreamy. That's a clue for you. So you can notice, you know, when you meet this person or if you already think you know who this person is, then that should be a trait that you will notice for some of you that this person's a bit um, spacey and dreamy. Okay. So let's see this. Especially when it comes to you, right? I mean, when we have a crush on someone, we spend a lot of time thinking about them, daydreaming about them, getting lost in our imaginations about, you know, the person that we're soft on and things like that so I feel like it's saying that as well so tell us more about this person that has a crush on group two okay this might not be the right deck or here this one's popping out all right this person could be African-American um, or of African descent we've got Ella Fitzgerald so you are your own best teacher. See the teacher thing again. This person um, could very well work as a teacher or there has been a teacher that has been very impactful on, on them, um, on them as people. During their formative years, they could talk to you about that person. I'm getting if that's the case, that person, the teacher was like a boomer um, on the older side, like grew up or was born in the 50s. I'm getting that for some reason. Um, nothing is more hard one than innocence. 
So this is about, yeah, coming back to innocence. I'm hearing Enya's song. So you can look up Enya. Um, I don't remember the exact title, but the song is like return to innocence. That's what's happening with this person. Like they strayed far, far from home, far from themselves. They let the world put their, put its finger in their face and tell them who to be. And now they're realizing the error of that and coming back to themselves, um, to their innocence. Intuition beats experience. Okay. So this person wanted to travel away and have a bunch of experiences, which is cool to an extent, right? I mean, if you're not hurting anybody, life is about experience but then this person's realizing like their inner being their connection to source that's more important that's where the real adventure lies by going within so yeah you are your own best teacher nothing's more hard one than innocence intuition beats experience so this is somebody that i feel has a lot to teach um will have a lot to teach you and just a lot to teach in general okay because they i mean even just by that card you can see that this person is a thoughtful person and has been through some things and learned some lessons themselves and so those are the teachers like those are the very best teachers the ones that communicate and speak from a place of experience so let's get this next cards I'm really drawn to her white pearls so sand creates pearls friction creates pearls this person has been through some stuff their last relationship was very bad getting toxic I also feel like this person has pearly whites very white teeth and they could have gone to the dentist and had had them whitened like it's so popular nowadays but I'm just getting like really white teeth okay so tell us more about group two's person that has a crush on them one's fast yeah we've got femme fatale femme fatale okay so that is highlights the erotic energy of the feminine opens your heart when your dependency is rejected so it does feel like this person was the type that maybe was a sugar baby could have been if they wanted to be had some of those values or they had a sugar baby themselves like that kind of toxic um unbalanced superficial just egoic um, relationship okay but what's happened is their heart has been opened by what they've been through so they can't really regret it because it's gotten them to this place where they are ready to settle down get in touch you know back in touch with their family or cultivate a family of their own okay this is a very erotic person whether man or woman um, has a lot of like feminine attraction something very attractive and sensual about this person and um, but they have learned the lesson of uh, not being in codependent relationships okay maybe they used their looks or something along those lines to get involved with people for the wrong reasons I don't know but um, they no longer do that because maybe the person that they tried that with rejected them or they're coming from some sort of a broken situation so rejection took place by one or both of those people we've got inappropriate use of sensuality attachment to money and power so there is that element I again I feel has to do with the Hosta La Vista card that this person has experienced such things and it was inappropriate and it was from an egoic place and so that's um, no longer an issue here or watch out for it because it could still be we'll see what else comes out we've got saboteur at the bottom of the deck highlights your fear of self-empowerment and the changes it would bring to your life so this is just a way of giving away your power right um, it's easy to fall back on your looks or if you're particularly sensual or charming or sexy person because you don't have to be traditionally good-looking or attractive um, you don't have to be traditionally pretty in order to be considered sexy. I just wanted to put that out there because this person has something about them that's just sexy. Um, they could be attractive as well, but um, it seems important to point that out. And so they took the easy way out relying kind of on their eroticism, their attractiveness um, to attract them situations where maybe they were kind of taken care of or hoping to take be taken care of or take care of somebody else you know it can be vice versa and then the, they learn the hard way that um, that didn't get them the empowerment that they were really looking for and what they were afraid of according to the saboteur card was their own self-empowerment and um, the changes that it would bring in their life like they were not ready to embrace the change of becoming self-empowered for some reason 
induces self-destructive behaviors or the desire to undermine others. So that kind of gives us a clue or a hint that this person would sabotage themselves, their own happiness. And as a result of that, you know, the world reflected back situations that sabotaged them as well. And so this is part of where they're coming from. Let's get some more cards here. All right. Yeah. Tell us more about this person that has a crush on group two. Oh, that's fast. All right, we've got serendipity. We've got life purpose, and we've got emotional freedom, okay? Underneath that, we've got distorted masculine and sexuality, which I feel like goes along with the story so far, why this person behaved in the ways of the previous cards talked about, stemming from distorted feminine or distorted masculine energy, which is, um, you know, a distortion of of your power it's a lack of empowerment and it was related to sensuality or sexuality and the way that that was used and now we're seeing through serendipitous events even this person and they're traveling they could be traveling over water but they are moving to greener pastures and this is being guided by you know source their higher self um their true life's purpose and it's coming through like opening their heart so whatever they've done you know, it's cracked open their heart. It's helped them. And through that, through our hearts, through our souls, we align with, you know, our true purpose. Um, what feels good and what's better and healthier for us. And for them, it's resulting in maturity. And then I feel like, again, um, God, source, their higher self, their guides, whatever you want to call it, is, is um, helping to guide them. But also they've grown in maturity as a result of these things they've been through. And their life's purpose is to experience emotional freedom, is to get back in touch with their innocence, as the previous card said, um, and get back in touch with their intuition. And so the fact that this person can be a bit dreamy or things like that is actually good. It nurtures their inner child, it fulfills their emotions, and it helps them to feel emotionally free, which is part of, you know, their life purpose. Okay, so let's see. What other cards am I drawn to here? us more about this person who has a crush on group two. All right. We have the King of Hearts, Fitzwilliam Darcy. Interesting. Yes. Fitzwilliam Darcy from Pride and Prejudice, one of the quintessential and maybe most popular leading men of any of Jane Austen's um, books or movies. And he's coming across in the King of Hearts or King of Cups energy. And he is somebody that has come from his trials, his, you know, tribulations that he went through that helps him change eventually into the kind of man that would, um, you know, open his heart. Because throughout the entire story, his heart is closed off. And it's due to something that happened to him, a betrayal, um, that really broke his heart. And so his focus then is on family and um, eventually his heart opens enough to where he can allow himself the emotional freedom and the ability to express himself in a romantic way to a romantic partner that would allow him to eventually cultivate his own, his own life and his own family with someone. So check out that story or, or movie if you're interested. This is going to provide you with more clues about the nature of this person who has a crush on you. And Fitzwilliam Darcy, he kind of stayed in the background, even acted cold and aloof toward in the object of his affection, um, like he was better than them, just in his ego and things, but was secretly pining for and like Elizabeth Bennet throughout. And she didn't even know it for most of the time. In fact, when he confessed it, um, she was shocked she was surprised and she was not having it because his behavior up to that point um 
had completely turned her off, right? But it was through that experience that um, eventually he was able to turn things around. So check it out if you haven't already, and let's get another card here. Tell us more about the person who has a crush on group two. it was going to come out but it didn't there we go we've got stevie wonder i believe when i fall in love it will be forever i believe when i fall in love when i fall in love with you it will be forever come on let's fall in love so i think that says it <laughs> your crush wants you to fall in love with them they want to fall in love with you um they believe it will be forever when that happens that's what they want. They're looking for a family, someone with whom they can have a family, someone with whom they can have forever, someone that they can spend the rest of their life with, which is very romantic. And they're looking at you as that person. Yeah, family, exactly. They could be wanting a, a child with you, okay? So it says... They just let us bring the new being to our dwelling? Surely this is incorrect, okay. So that's a really cute way of saying we're not prepared. So maybe somebody out there is not prepared to have a child um, or this is your first child or will be. And there's some like, you know, a little bit of panic like the card expresses, you know, not knowing like, can we really do this? They're just gonna let us take the baby home? This can't be, this can't be right. Um, so yeah, there's that as well. Okay, and I feel like this person is going to um, feel that way as well. Like if you were to accept them into your life, they would be like taken aback, a little bit surprised and thinking that maybe you wouldn't accept them into, um, into your life, but um, maybe even into, into your home, right? Um, depending. So uh, after a date, perhaps, you know, you invite them in or vice versa. This person, like there's going to be this moment of um, kind of uh, surprise. Okay, so what would this person say to you if they had no filter? What would the person who has a crush on group two say to group two if they had no filter? I love your eyes. I get lost in them. You always make me smile. I love your face. So just loving on you, <laughs> loving on your looks, your eyes in particular, something about them. It could be a water sign, water dominant, or just have compelling eyes. Or to this person, you have compelling eyes. They get lost in them. You always make me smile. I love your face. So lots of complimentary words there. You make me want to be the best because you deserve the best. Exactly. Just the way that Elizabeth Bennett brought out the conscience in, in Mr. Darcy is the way that, um, you know, you're going to affect this person or the way that they imagine that you would affect them, okay? They just want to be the best because you deserve the best. A whole bunch more coming out. I'm just going to take the top one. If you could see yourself through my eyes, you'd see how special you really are. So it's spoken like a true, um, you know, a true admirer. That this person feels like um, you really are special, more special than you realize you are. And then I just opened up on this card. Um, I'm holding my composure, staying cool and calm. I prefer to not allow my emotions to get the best of me. So that's very much Mr. Darcy energy and kind of, well, it does correspond to a lot of what we've already seen in the reading so far. This person could um, be Virgo, could be Leo. I'm trying to see what other ones here. Um, they could be, okay? I'm going to pull a couple of cards from the Numinous deck, which will hopefully help us out astrologically speaking to let us know a little bit more about this person's astrological placements. Tell us more about the person who has a crush on group two. We've got Aries, strong Aries energy, the radical. 
active, self-starter, daring, fierce, assertive, fiery, exhilarate, exhilarating, innocent, on a mission, bossy, drive, driving, um, I'm drawn, this person probably does have a nice car, sparky, courageous, selfish, <laughs> we got that earlier, macho, we got that earlier, impulsive, argumentative, competitive, okay. Tell us more about this person that has a crush on our group two. We've got Pisces, so strong. Pisces energy, the mystic. So imaginative, compassionate, healing, empathetic, mystical, adoring, magical, allowing, dreamy, ephemeral, enigmatic, spiritual, emotional, escapist, impractical, oceanic, self-pitying, and illogical. Okay, so those are some clues as to who this person is. And we've got some Scorpio energy with Pluto. And didn't I say water sign energy might be prominent because of the eyes? I always associate compelling eyes with water sign placements. Um, transformation, renewal, inner resources, basic instinct, motivation. Um, speaking of basic instinct, that has Sharon Stone in it. And she is a Pisces. And I believe her co-star is a Libra. So somebody might need to hear that. Might be a clue. Uh, motivation, personal power, evolution, composing, cycles, death, rebirth, subversion, suspicion, obsession, intensity, reckoning, reckoning, taboos, clearing, and extremes. So I do feel like this person does have some extremes to their personality, a lot of which they are leaving behind. They've had to go through some tough times to learn the hard lessons, but they are moving forward. So that looks like they've changed their mind, have undergone some sort of transformation and ego death and this is helping them to move forward in a more positive way. I think this person does have some really um, nice balance between masculine and feminine energy. So um, that's good to see. This is what I've got for you guys. Thanks for tuning in. I appreciate you. Please hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. It does support the channel and keep me coming back to do more readings. That being said, stick around for group three or tune into group one if you feel guided to or check out the playlist link down below for a different reading. And I'll talk to you guys next time. Welcome group three. Thanks for tuning in to your reading. So who has a crush on you? We got the six of hearts for you and we've got the narcissism card. So it looks to me like a narcissist from your past or a karmic soulmate. <laughs> um, this is somebody that, like the card says, is controlling, unfaithful, manipulative, egocentric, entitled, selfish, rule breaker. So it could be any of those words or any of those adjectives or all of those adjectives. And I feel like a lot of you know who this person is or this is going to be a nice heads up, a warning to avoid this person. But you never know what, what story is going to unfold through the cards. So we'll see what happens. Um, one thing we do know, however narcissistic this person is, they do have their eye on, eye on you. They are attracted to you. They do feel like um, you're a sweet person. Unfortunately, narcissistic people with narcissistic tendencies do have a bad habit of, um, you know, preying, preying on sweet people. And six, six of hearts is... Um, it represents a sweet, even innocent person. So, but maybe you appeal to this person's inner child. Um, maybe, you know, you guys do connect in a heart-centered way, which would be rare for this type. I would err on the side of caution, but we'll see. We'll see what comes out, okay? So, let's get started. Let me find the cards that I need to pull first and foremost. And I'm going to use my little Kleenex box. I guess we'll start with that and then um, so go ahead and clear your mind take a nice deep breath and let's see who has a crush on group three whoops hit the camera <clears throat> excuse me we've got Priests are naturally inspirational, uplifting, motivating, energizing, and visionary. Okay. So it's kind of interesting when we think of, you know, some clergy, some priests, people in religious orders or with those traits that they are like double-sided, hypocritical. So maybe that's what we're seeing here with this person because this is, these are some very positive traits. Hopefully they embody more of these traits, but 
Um, that also can be somebody that is, you know, trying to win you over or this is a side of their personality that they use to get what they want, okay? Um, but I hope, hey, maybe it is that they are, I mean, people with narcissistic tendencies often are um, charming, endearing, um, know how to say the right things. Can they very well can be in, inspiring and motivating? Let's see um, here could be a leader but is just as happy with academics okay so this is somebody that yeah they they could be a leader um if they apply themselves to that but they could also work in academics um so like be a, a teacher um, have a higher education be well read or just be very intelligent um and this is somebody that is quite you know like intelligent so that's what we've got with that and let's get a card from the Divine Masculine deck. If you're here for a feminine, just apply it that way. So who is this person that has a crush on group three? Who is this person that has a crush on group three? This one's kind of poking out. So we've got the fool. Okay. So for some reason I'm getting Aquarius energy. I think it's because this person looks a little bit like James Dean. So might have that rebel without a cause energy or looks to them. Um, James Dean, I he was either a Libra or an Aquarius. I don't remember which one it is. Um, but also that intelligence factor. That we see with air signs um, and the fool in the tarot is um, Aquarius energy sometimes Aries innocence play catalyst blind trust never looking back taking a chance so this would indicate that there is something innocent about this person you know don't they say that you know narcissism is like a front for like bipolar disorder not that I'm a diag um, not that I'm diagnosing this person I'm just simply saying that it, it is a mask for um, some other issue or vulnerability and in this case it could be that this person um, does have a certain in innocence um, and blind trust to them um, that they're trying to cover up and perhaps this is the this is why we got the six of hearts indicating that there is this playful innocent part to this person that you know maybe they see that in you maybe the two have two of you have connected in that way maybe you feel like this is a sweet person or you know maybe a little bit risky or rebellious and maybe you're gonna find that you know attractive as many people do like the bad boy type or the bad girl type but um, you're gonna also feel like there's this sort of playful kind of childlike thing to them like a youthful energy that they have and they're willing to take risks and things like that you know I feel like some of them have really strong faith in their beliefs whatever those beliefs might be I feel like some of their beliefs are untraditional um, you know uh, unorthodox but whatever they believe in they um, really believe in strongly so um, it could be that the two of you connect or will connect in this way in an innocent and playful way okay so let's get some traits on this person tell us more about the person who has a crush on group three that one flew We've got long hair. So this person does have kind of longer hair. It's, um, not terribly short, as you can see on the cards. Like for a man, the hair is a little bit on the long side, can be even longer than what you see on the card. And keep in mind the pictures on the cards can be clues as to how this person will appear as well. If it's a female, they have long hair. Long hair is coming through. We've got people person, so they do have that ability to interact with others. They could be quite adept socially speaking. Um, they could be quite charming people. People are people, people, <laughs> people persons, um, you know, do tend to be um, at least somewhat, you know, charming and engaging, right? Let me put this back and get another piece of this deck. 
Tell us more about this person that has a crush on group three. We've got quiet. So it's like they are um, kind of a popular loner. They um, don't always like say what's on their mind. Um, like the like the paper said earlier, this person could be a leader, but they're just as happy. You know, being an academic, we associate academics with being introverted or having like more of a cerebral or intro introverted vibe at times. Um, and so that's like this person um, kind of is both, right? Tell us more about this person who is interested in group three. A couple more. We've got scars, okay? So you may notice some scars that this person has. I mean, they could even skateboard or do other daredevil type activities, or they could have done so in their youth. So um, this is a risk taker. Um, some of them have, they're scrappy, or they were in their youth, so actual have like actual scars from like physical altercations. I'm getting for some of you, maybe not all of you. Um, and then we've got sloppy here. So yeah, they probably are not as skilled as um, they think they are at the certain things that they engage in that that are risky because maybe they're a bit clumsy or like this says a little bit sloppy, casual kind of thing. Okay, so that that's what we've got there. I'm be being drawn to a different deck than what I used in the previous two groups, a similar but different deck. Okay. So let's go ahead and find out more about this person. Who is this person that has a crush on group three? Oh, this one already kind of stuck out. We've got Whitney Wolf Heard. I don't know who she is. Um, and the card says, if you don't make the first move, someone else will. Every hour spent staring at a screen is an hour spent alone. Beware, beware. To other people, your profile is your true self. So this is somebody that is image conscious. I get that some of you are this way as well because it's a general reading. It can be vice versa. Some of you um, look you like know how to take a selfie and or you know how to do your your hair your makeup your clothes she's kind of chic looking and I want to say that she has something to do like see all the selfies in the back in the background um, and yeah so I feel like um, you know some of you watching kind of reflect her others of you this is this person's energy as well so this could be a same-sex um, relationship but doesn't have to be but I'm going to say that because that's coming through. But this is somebody that, um, again, has strong beliefs. And in one of the their beliefs is that they should assert themselves. So, you know, it's like once they observe someone and it's like this person's observing you and then figure out a strategy because I feel like this is a strategic person. They're going to take like a risk um, and come toward you. Now, I don't feel like this person's as, as good at strategizing as they think they are because <laughs> they might be clumsy and when they approach you um, or in how they handle people. But um, this is somebody that, um, you know, thinks things through before they make their move. But they are someone that once they decide to, they're not afraid to do that, make the move. And um, this is somebody that you know, could be spending a lot of time behind a screen or the opposite, the opposite. They wouldn't be caught dead, you know, in a cubicle or um, sitting in front of a screen for too, for too long, especially with regard to work. Like this is somebody that probably has uh, a job where they can be active outdoors and, or there's a good balance that they have, you know, they're aware of, you know, that, um, they should be active, you know, that, um, that's something that they're aware of. So also it's an image conscious person. Beware to other people, your profile is your true self. So for that, you know, that goes along with the narcissism card. Um, there's somebody that they have an image, regardless of what that image is, is and what it looks like, whether it's the refined image or like the bad boy or the bad girl image, um, they are aware that, you know, their profile um, is what people could take as their true self. And 
they are, are also aware of how they can use that to manipulate people's image, image of them as well, okay? And that people can be quite, you know, superficial and things like that when it comes to understanding somebody's true self or a true, like somebody's true nature or character or personality because they rely on, just as many people do, it's like the culture now to rely on like profile pictures to make judgments about people. Um, and this person kind of uses that to their advantage and is simply aware of that. And then at the bottom of the deck, we have Mary Shelley. The beginning is always today. So this is somebody that lives in the moment. Elegance is inferior to virtue. So this is somebody, again, strong beliefs. And sometimes, you know, their beliefs are that, you know, they don't have to appear the way other people want them to. Um, if they are a little bit um, sloppy or eccentric in their appearance, then it's part partially because they feel like, um, their character, their beliefs about whatever it is they believe and how they want to present themselves and doing their own thing or whatever it is to be a rebel, they want to um, preserve that virtue within themselves above, you know, looking a certain way or in a way that people would praise them for, um, which is kind of interesting. But some of them like praise. I'm not saying they don't. They just like it in a different way because they have kind of specific virtues or um beliefs and then we've got a slavish bondage to parents cramps every faculty of the mind okay so this is somebody that probably left home early um, or doesn't want to be anything like their parents or a parent in particular they wanted to always you know be free a free spirit think um, their own way think outside the box kind of rebel against whatever beliefs or ways that their parents had or tried to impose on them Okay, just like Mary Shelley, you know, ladies back in the early 1800s weren't supposed to write, um, well, books in, in general, period, weren't supposed to write books, um, but they certainly weren't supposed to write them about monsters, the Frankenstein, the Frankenstein monster. I do feel like this is talking about kind of the dichotomy or the two sides to this person, um, where, you know, this person does have that side of themselves that kind of is, is unappealing to most people that is um, aggressive is is kind of clumsy um, even though they might appear like more together than that but one thing you'll notice is that however they look on the outside whether it's elegant or um, not so elegant <laughs> casual sloppy whatever then you know they have this side to them that is quite different from that you know, that they don't show people all the time or that, you know, you have to get to know them to see it. Like, however they appear, they their image is um, calculated, okay? Their image is on purpose. Let's put it that way, okay? So let's see what else. And if the reading is resonating and you're getting something out of the reading or you just like this kind of a reading, please hit that like button and subscribe. It does support the channel and keep me coming back to do more readings for you. If you'd like a private reading, my contact information is in the description box down below. Liking the reading interacts with it, helps it to resonate more, puts your energy signature on the reading. Plus, it's just a really nice way to do an energy exchange with the channel. And I really appreciate it. So tell me more about this person who has a crush on group three. Okay, we've got two cards coming out. Okay, we've got the gambler, which makes sense, risk taker, um, willingness to follow intuition even when others doubt you. So yeah, that's that rebellious kind of energy and they will go by their gut instinct and what they feel is right and they will follow that. Um, the shadow of that is relying on luck rather than hard work. So that where it comes into, you know, relying on their luck instead of like the card says, instead of hard work, like hoping that, you know, they're going to hit it big or that things are just gonna work out for them and all they have to do is play all day, for example. That'll be for some, not for all, but that's just an example, you know? 
and then we've got the wounded or child wounded which I did mention earlier that there this person has wounding that um, narcissistic traits is associated uh, with like borderline personality or someone that presents with some of those traits of being like deeply insecure divided within themselves uh, episodes of depression versus episodes of mania or hyperactivity um, if not technically this is if this is not them technically as in they've been diagnosed this way there is definitely some woundedness to this person now the light side of that is it's awakened compassion and desire to serve other wounded children which again from the very beginning with that six of hearts we saw and i said that maybe your inner children um, is what going to bring you guys together that's how you're going to connect so there is this underlying compassion and desire to serve other wounded children. So if they see that in you, they're going to want to be compassionate towards you for that reason. Um, and it opens the learning path of forgiveness. So in that way, you will serve each other, or at least this person will be served by um, having compassion for another wounded child. Um, and, and how that will serve them is it helps them to um, open the path to forgiveness of whatever it is they need to forgive. And the shadow of this is blames all dysfunctional relationships on childhood wounds, resists moving on through forgiveness, okay? So this is something that I feel like this person um, struggles with. But they have their eye on you because their inner child suspects that they can be healed through a relationship with you. And for them to heal, it would be to stop blaming, you know, their bad relationships on their past, even though there is a correlation it's better for them to forgive and then in so doing you know they're able to have healthier relationships that would be what it would take for them to have healthier relationships as opposed to you know what they might be doing now which is just blaming um, their childhood so now we've got that let's learn more about this person that has a crush on you Tell us more about this person that has a crush on group three. Okay, nothing wants to come out of this deck, so I'm going to use a different deck. Oh, and this one flew out immediately. We've got I miss you. Indicating um, someone from your past, perhaps. I know that some of you watching, this is someone from your past or an ex. Um, and just know, like, they're coming across saying they miss you and there is some sort of a misunderstanding. Um, we've also got I am afraid, okay? And making excuses. And... Um, yeah, so maybe there's a third party as well here with the third party card coming out. So this is what this person is saying. Like there's a misunderstanding, they're afraid. That goes along with what I was saying about, you know, them masking their fear or their woundedness, you know, by coming across, you know, controlling or egocentric. And um, making excuses goes along with the, this card about blaming dysfunctional relationships um, on childhood wounds like I was wounded as a child that's why I act this way or whatnot I'm still feeling drawn to this deck let's get another card here who is this person that has a crush on group three saying goodbye okay so somebody that is saying goodbye or has said goodbye to you, evidently. Is that true for the majority of you? Yeah, I feel like this is um, not true for the majority of you. I feel like this person, this is talking about, like, if this is your story, you'll know it. Otherwise, this is talking about how this person has approached and interacted in relationships, especially romantic relationships, okay? So it's letting you know, like, this person's um, type of relationship style. And when we talk about dysfunctional relationships, um, this is what it is, okay? 
So like this person, you know, is afraid and, and so they involve themselves in third party situations or are unfaithful or just allow some sort of outside interference to divide them and their person of interest and then um, they make excuses like I'm very busy or you're misunderstanding me and then ultimately what ends up happening is they say goodbye and then they miss them again and then they do the same thing again so that's what's coming through with this person so um, for some reason you're meant to know that and let's get some more messages here I'll get some messages from this person soon, but we've got a few more decks to get through. What else would this person um, say or tell us more about this person who has a crush on group three? can hear my soul serenade aretha franklin soul serenade yeah this person feels like a special connection with you um they're drawn to you likely because you are soulmates um whether that means you know this is your forever soulmate or not there is still a draw um to you and it like i said before it feels like it's coming from a very sweet place it's a connection between two inner children there's a sense that you feel familiar that there's a certain comfort zone they have with you or can have with you that they're attracted to like you hear their soul the song of their soul like despite you know ex their exterior and how um, careless or how rebellious they may be they feel like you see underneath that or you connect with them underneath that in a special way where you are connected on a soul level, okay? And that's how they feel about that. Tell me more about this person who has a crush on group three. Wow. Okay, so this person knows that this is a wild ride or that they offer a wild ride because see how they are on um, a Ferris wheel. And for some of you, you have gone round and round with this person already. Um, but either way, they still would like to marry you. They would still like to propose to you. They can see that, you know, happening with you. Be my most significant being forever. Affirmative with my entire blood pump. So wanting to... Um, offer you that engagement ring or wanting to accept an offer of engagement from you depending who's watching and so that's how this person uh, feels that's another clue as to who this person is okay so let's get some messages I, think I just want to know more about this person please that has a crush on group three what would they say if they had no filter? What on earth did I think about all the time before you? So this person thinks about you a lot. I was getting air sign energy, strong in the chart. So those are the thinkers. And it does feel like this person's thinking about you a lot. I'm also getting page of swords energy so they're observing you and um, you could get communication from them or you already are in light communication with them your lips look so kissable you are the greatest kisser kiss me please so that's for those of you who've already dealt with this person or currently dealing with them wow you make monogamy seem easy I only need you so again this person feeling like you're the one for them that they want to marry they want to get they want to get engaged to they can see that happening with you like even though in the past they have been unfaithful allowing third parties to get in the way then blaming it on their upbringing with you monogamy seems easy they only need you okay we've got two cards coming out and let me just kind of flip it around here we go Honestly, I lack the backbone to tell you how I really feel about you, okay? Makes sense. 
and you don't always have to go along to get along, you know. It's okay if your opinions are different from mine. So I think this person is trying to say that, you know, they're controlling, they're, they've got that side to them, they've got strong beliefs and boundaries, and they can be however they can be egocentric, but they would prefer someone that would stand up to them. They would prefer someone who, you know, just says when there's a differing of opinions, you know, opinions vary and still like stands by their own opinion. Like they don't want a yes person. Okay. Um, so that's a message for you, you know, especially if you know this person and you know you're guilty of that, then they're, they're letting you know. And or you can use that like in the future whenever you talk to this person that, you know, definitely... <laughs> stand up to this person you don't have to be a yes person they want to hear your differing opinions you know um and so um that's good to see because that means that this person's not so very controlling and so um very selfish that they can't even tolerate a different differing opinion but um yeah they're not they, they would hear you know your opinion they would prefer that you just don't go along to get along you know so and then yet at the same time they're saying they lack the backbone to tell you how they really feel so and that's coming through you know as well so let's get um <clears throat> some cards from the numinous deck to see about any astrological placements that could be a clue as to who this person is that has a crush on you we do have you know fire and water and air i already said that i don't think i've gotten much earth but it's still there still could be earth here so who is this person that has a crush on group three Taurus, speaking of Earth, right on cue, the bombshell. Earthy, practical, steadfast, productive, fertile, tactile, ample, worthy, ripe, pleasure-seeking, sensuous, blooming, solid, possessive, tenacious, loyal, patient, deliberate. Yes, I feel like this is a very deliberate person. Yeah. And I've known many a Taurus that were very um, strategic, <laughs> shall we say, in their pursuit of um, somebody that they're interested in and in their main maintaining of a relationship with somebody that they want and so I feel like that goes with it um, earth signs are the thinkers as well as same as the air signs and um, so these are some clues as to who this person is so I'm really drawn to the word ample um, pleasure seeking and tenacious okay I get some possessiveness with this person as well but this person is coming across as, um, you know, loyal and steadfast too. For some of you, this person um, doesn't have as many of those narcissistic traits as for others of you. Okay. Then we've got the fourth house, which is ruled by cancer. They could have a cancer rising. <clears throat> excuse me um, family home background comfort cooking inner world real estate shelter self-care rejuvenation and habits um, and shell okay so this person is very self-protecting they can be a homebody at times this is their haven where they go to recharge their batteries family could be very important to them um, I feel like their background is important to them, where they come from. Uh, it still has an influence on them, both in terms of their wounding that they're, they're needing to overcome or are, are healing from, and in terms of some of the good things that they experienced growing up and some of the beliefs that they gained through their childhood and their, through their past. It's like tradition um, is kind of important to this, to this person, whether those traditions are like beneficial or not beneficial. They still exist for this person and um, this person does have a tendency to be nostalgic they probably fluctuate between seeing their past with rose-colored glasses and seeing their past as being worse than it was 
um, but this person does have um, might own their own home work in real estate but either way um, they rejuvenate by going within and you know the home is important to them their roots are important to them we've got the seventh house relating that is Libra energy also four and seven could be in somebody's numerology We've got partners, companionship, best friends, marriage, relationship, opposition, equal, equilibrium, sharing, communion, justice, balance, and social awareness. So the bombshell wants to lay down roots by relating in uh, a relationship that um, results in marriage, basically. Okay? This person's looking for a partner, a best friend, a marriage relationship. Like, whether or not they're capable emotionally and mentally and, like, with in terms of their mental their mental health to have that that's still what they want okay so this person is wanting um the whole shebang here and this could be somebody that is attracted to someone that's the opposite of them i feel like you are probably quite different from this person but yet your inner children connect or they see you as somebody that their inner child can be comfortable with which is very important to them comfort is important to them okay and if you guys are opposite it won't matter to this person as long as they feel comfortable with you and they're watching you to see you know if you are that person for them they really want to come into a union and I think they're just looking to see if you're the right one and right now in their minds you are the right one <laughs> like you're the one they want to marry have a relationship with um, share with you know be fair to treat you in a way that they didn't treat others in the past you know um, what makes you so different, right? Is this just, you know, a sort of love bombing? Is this them fooling themselves thinking they can give you all this or that they're ready for all this? Or is this genuine and authentic? I guess you're going to have to wait and see and find out, okay? Um, let's see. Yeah, right here. I just opened up on this. Right now I'm assessing you to make sure you're the best fit. If only I was as good a judge of character as you. So this person acknowledges that they're not a great judge of character, like not even of themselves, um, probably. Whether they acknowledge that it's not a they're not a great judge of character of themselves or not, there is something questionable about the way that they're seeing things. Um, if they're not, you know, taking accountability or really being honest with themselves about, you know, what they're ready for and certain things about themselves. So you're gonna want to look out for that, I think. Um, but this person does give you credit for, you know, they perceive you as being a good ju judge of character and all they can do is just kind of watch and see, you know, what they think from a distance. And then, um, at some point they will take the initiative to, um, come towards you and they probably will do it <laughs> in a, in a sneaky way. Um, and their intentions will probably be to, I feel like it is for them to heal. Like they are attracted to the energy that you bring they perceive you as being stable maybe you are a taurus um or some but they do perceive you as some place where they can relax that where they can like rest and renew and heal and that's why this person thinks that with you they can have a solid new beginning that they can um, lay down roots with you because roots are important to this person and once this person is healed, they are like they have emperor energy, like they have the mixings for divine masculine energy. But it's like, are they going to be able to put those mixings together in a way that produces um, the right result, you know, or is it going to be a mess? <laughs> is it going to be um, something that falls flat? You know, it's up to this person um, if they're going to be able to do that. And. Uh, I don't know. I think you should be careful with this person because it takes more than good intentions or the right ingredients to grow into um, your potential, right? And um, they're looking to you to help them to kind of heal and grow into that potential. Um, whereas, you know, some of you might be better off with somebody that's um, already done all their own healing work and um, can come to you as a whole person already, right? So um, instead of somebody that... Uh, and, you know, would just want you to fall in love, maybe just fall in love with their potential. So that's what I've got for you, Group 3. Thanks for tuning in. Please hit that like button and subscribe. I do appreciate it. It keeps the channel going. If you'd like a private reading, my contact information is in the description box below. And I will talk to you guys next time.